Yeah, you can say one, uh, the visual arts, uh, changing tastes. Um, throughout the centuries, people have tended to be uh, suspicious of the new art movement. Suspicious. Suspicious of uh, the new art movements of the period. Uh, at the end of the uh, 19th century, uh, for example, people were shocked by impre uh, impressionism. Impressionism. You're you're saying the um, French version. Impressionism. And in English, it's nism. Impressionism. Okay, impressionism. Uh, uh, criticizing um, its practice. Criticizing. Uh, criticizing. Uh, criticizing uh, its practitioners uh, as a uh, careless uh, dobers. Um, dobers. Dober. Careless dobers. What is the meaning of dober? Dobers means uh, someone who paints quickly and carelessly, disapproving. Uh huh. Carelessly, and it's a disapproving word. I'm still tr struggling uh, to pin this comment. See. Uh -huh. Please. Uh huh. That's it. Now I got it pinned. Okay. Um. So um. These are, these words, I mean, Impressionism, then later on we have Cubist, uh, Surrealism, uh, and um, these are schools of arts and have their own exact meaning. Um, you know, I'm not very into art. I don't know if you are. Are you into art? Um, for do for Dobbers. Oh, I, I'm in, in, okay, okay, no, no, in total. no, I find them too short, and, uh, you know, I, uh, no, I'm not, uh, I'm not too, uh, in, um, painting arts, no. Mm -hmm. Me neither, so, um, I guess people who are watching us are not, uh, you know, maybe they are, and for those who are, uh, for those who aren't, so here is what we will be doing. Um, the definitions of the, um, these movements are not given here in the text, but they are provided in the exercises, in the exercise one, in the first exercise. So we will finish this paragraph um, then we will uh, discuss the meaning of these movements uh, through exercise one. I mean, before going through part B, we will go through exercise one because it has to deal, it has to do with these movements. Okay. Um, is it okay with you? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. 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 Um... Then uh, later, when faced with uh, cubist uh, painting uh, paintings, uh, the public were puzzled by those two. Uh, mm, uh, Sima, uh, the public were puzzled yeah. by those two. The, uh, I want to know um, uh, the meaning of this sentence. The public were puzzled by those two. Puzzle here um, can be an adjective meaning confused, bewildered, oh, confused. Because, you know, um, the paintings uh, that were painted, in, you know, by an, by an impressionist, okay, were kind of confusing for people, for normal people, okay? okay. The sentence suggests that the public, I mean, people in general, were puzzled by those two. Those refers to cubist paintings. Mm -hmm. Cubist paintings were confusing, too, for people. Okay, I got it. Uh, the surrealists uh, were, init uh, were initially deemed crazy. Uh, deemed means uh, considered, and it's a form mm -hmm. of word. Um, yeah, and uh, initially means uh, at the beginning. 
uh, yeah initially means at the beginning yeah exactly uh okay up art up art or op art up art uh british op art american op art okay up art was a uh, criticized because its subject matter was said to consist of nothing of significance. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, subject matter means content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, however, nowadays, uh, leaking uh, surrealism or uh, of art is considered perfectly acceptable. Liking, huh? Liking. Liking. Liking surrealism or of art is considered perfectly acceptable. And images from these schools of art appear everywhere, from posters to advertising campaigns. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, schools of art means art movement. Exactly, art movement. And... Um... The starting point of uh, most of them was France, uh, to the best of my knowledge. Mm -hmm. These, you know, uh, artistic movements uh, or um, literature movements. Mm -hmm. Looking back in the history, yeah, they started in France. Okay, yeah, I think. Yeah. So, um, throughout part A, let's go through it again. Did you finish? Did you finish? Uh, no, 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 no. It's not finished yet. Uh-huh. Okay, please continue. Uh, perhaps because of the uh, uh, ubiquity, ubiquity. Ubiquity. Ubiquity uh, of advertising. Yeah. People tend to be more visually literate uh, than they use. Literate literate than uh, they used to be and so are perhaps uh, in inert inert in your in your uh, two surprises uh, visually literate means um, uh, educated with regard to art and uh, i love this uh phrase visually literate Visually literate, yeah, educated with regard to it. Uh, and uh, in your word, uh, too, means not affected by. Mm -hmm. so you are so used to something, you are so used to something that you get do not get affected by uh, uh, any other distraction. And can we say, to habitat? Used to. 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 If there is a synonym, you know, um, combined from the word, uh, formed from the word habit, I cannot recall it just right now. Mm. Mm. Ah, habitu habituate. We can say habitu habituate. I don't know the pronunciation exactly. But, but. Habituate, huh? Habituate. Let me check it then. Habituate. habituate. Let me have a final check. Um, yeah, habituated. Yeah. Habituated. Uh, it means, yeah, used to or accustomed to something, but in year is stronger than uh, being simply used to something. Okay. And the last mm -hmm. time, perhaps new movements uh, in art will meet uh, with less uh, hostility in future. Mm -hmm. What is hostility? Um, I think it means uh, violence. Yeah. Uh, here, yeah, one of the meanings can be violence, uh, but here means opposition. Opposition. Mm -hmm. Being opposed to something, right? 
Okay. Cool. Now, uh, going through part A again, uh, but referring to the meanings of these um, artistic movements that are provided in the first exercise. Throughout the centuries, people have tended to be suspicious of the new art movements of their period. At the end of the 19th century, for example, people were shocked by Impressionism. So Impressionism is a movement. Let's uh, look for the meaning of Impressionism in exercise one. Okay. Um, right now? Yeah, yes, okay. please. Exercise one. Um, okay, number four. What is the late 19th century school of art whose aim was to uh, represent the effects of light on people or scenes? Um, exactly. So if we just... Uh, if you just omit what and is and uh, make it uh, turn it to an affirmative sentence, that will be definition of Impressionism. The late 19th century school of art whose aim was to present the effects of light on people or scenes uh, to suggest the atmosphere rather than the details. You know, let me um, uh, provide with more details. Uh, so the em emphasis was on the atmosphere rather than details. Of course, these are, you know, uh, some mere definitions. And unless you do not practice in these uh, um, fields, you don't get the exact meaning. So we're just giving the definition. We're not, you know, claiming to be artists or something. Yeah. I know. Okay. So that is the meaning of Impressionism. Criticizing its practitioners as careless as careless dopers. So uh, people were shocked by Impressionism criticizing its practitioners as careless dopers. Later, when faced with Cubist paintings, what is the meaning of Cubist? Uh, cubist uh, is number three. The early 20th century school of art, uh, which depicted Depicts. Depicts people or objects as a set of geometric uh, shapes. Exactly. So cubism uh, is, cubist is the person, cubism is the noun, is the name of the school, is the name of the movement. Uh, the early 20th century school of art, which depicts people or objects as a set of geometric shapes like a rectangle, triangle, using these sort of uh, geometric shapes in their paintings, okay? Okay. And uh, the public were puzzled by those two. The surrealists, okay. Surrealism? Surrealism is... Surrealism, the movement would be surrealism. Surrealism uh, is uh, number one. The early 20th uh, century school of art which shows unusual or impossible things happening. Uh huh. The early 20th, okay, the pronunciation is 20th century school of art which shows unusual or impossible things happening. So this is surrealism. Surrealists were initially deemed crazy. All part was criticized because its subject matter was said to consist of nothing of significance. All part. All part. Number two. Uh, the mid-20th century school of art which has its origins in uh, optical illusions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure all of us have seen such um, work of art, but we just don't know the, um, the name of professional the name. name. Yeah. yeah, like, you know, a lot of shapes in, um, uh, for example, uh, triangles or squares with a white background, okay? Mm -hmm. And when you move, some illusions are created and you think that they move too, but they do not. Yeah, I know. Right? Uh, or um, some striped uh, shapes, just like your um, shirt, 
uh, they can create optical illusions as well. So in our part, they use such tricks. That's why um, people who criticized this movement said that it has nothing of significance. The content is um, not combined of something important mm -hmm. uh, or uh, worthy. Uh, so, however, nowadays, liking surrealism or op art is considered perfectly acceptable, and images from these schools of art appear everywhere, from posters to advertising campaigns, perhaps because of the ubiquity. Uh -huh. Ubiquity, uh, if something is ubiquitous, uh, ubiquitous uh, ubiquity is the noun, ubiquitous, T-I-O-U-S is the adjective. If something is ubiquitous, it's common, it's usual, it's prevalent. And ubiquity is the noun. Um, are you taking any notes, Maliha? Yeah, I am uh, writing, I am writing ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. So perhaps because of the ubiquity of advertising, people tend to move visually literate than they used to be. So, and so are perhaps inured to surprises. Perhaps new movements in art will meet uh, with less hostility in future. Okay, we said that inured means uh, getting used to, being used to something so much that you not get affected. Um, by anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, Sima, we have the uh, for subject matter and we will be literate in uh, exercise. Exercise. Exercise number one. Okay. Uh, then read them, please. And then uh, we don't have to go through exercise one again. Okay. Uh, subject matter is uh, number five. Um, uh, the phrase can be used uh, can be used to mean the content of a work of art. And the uh, mm -hmm. visual literate uh, number six uh, phrase can the phrase can be used to describe someone with an educated understanding of art. Exactly. Now let's move to part B. Again, this unit is a little bit. Uh, um, not complex, but the exercises uh, I, make me do this. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of uh, professional. Yeah, it's a professional subject uh, that uh, um, usually uh, all the people uh, don't know about that. Uh, you have to be artist or uh, you have to be uh, in the art. Into art into art uh, or something like this uh, to know about the, uh, these expressions or uh, these works. These but works. yeah, I agree, but some adjectives are useful and advanced yeah. learners of English are expected to uh, know these um, vocabularies. So, uh, but I meant, I meant the exercises are kind of, you know, uh, they make me to do like this. Now, we're going to move to part B, but again, at the same time, we will be doing exercise three and four. So exercise three uh, wants us to say whether the meanings of the uh, words provided in part B are negative or positive, or they can be either positive or negative, dep depending on the context, okay? okay. And uh, we will do it while reading part B, and exercise four wants us to give some examples to use these words. Ma, I, uh, refer. Yeah, I saw this exercise uh, before our session. I think uh, I, I can't do it. Yeah, we, we were, mm -hmm, we're not going to give examples for uh, all of these words in part B. And of course, as a person who is not into uh, painted art, we're not gonna give examples of, you know, uh, paintings, but we can, in order to, you know, uh, 
in order to understand the meaning more clearly, we can uh, provide examples like, you know, from movies. Okay. Sometimes you can use these words for movies. Uh, movies are another kind of art, aren't they? Okay. Mm -hmm. I allow us to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thanks. Respecting with a lot of respect to the uh, author, uh, authors of the um, exercises, but uh, we're going to do it in our own way. So. Okay. Uh, words for uh, commenting on art. Uh, original, uh, new, in a special and interesting way. The opposite of original means a predictable. Predictable. So, original, is it a positive word or negative one? Oh. Or it can be both? Uh, I think it's positive word. Original is positive. What about predictable? Uh, negative word. Negative, yeah. If something is predictable, it can get boring easily. Okay? okay. So, it has a negative connotation or association now uh, do you have any specific exam example uh, of any work of art that uh, can be described as original or predictable mm, like yeah. let me about okay movie. okay uh, about movie yeah I am uh, I don't know if you uh, see if you saw the um, if you've seen if you've seen, ah, if you have seen, you've seen. If you've seen the movie and uh, to Shabla, d'accord, uh, d'accord, uh, in, uh, um, in, in English, huh? In Tushable, in English, I don't know. Uh, it's a French movie. Yeah, it's a French movie, uh, uh, and uh, you can find a predictable uh, version uh, in English. It, uh, it's uh, called um, Up, Down, yes, is, uh, I don't know the uh, exact name. Upside Down? Upside Down, yeah. Uh, upside Down. Yeah, it's a predictable version of uh, uh, an original uh, movie, original French movie. Aha, uh -huh. uh, now I think I kind of get you and I kind of don't get you. So you say that um, original version of this movie, Upside Down, uh, what was the French title? Yes, uh, uh, Antusha. Okay, is a, an original work of art. Mm -hmm. huh? But the English version of it is some sort of predictable. huh? Yes, yes. It's okay, I got you. Okay, it's something that I said. I don't know if it's correct for um, if it's correct if we use predictable for um, the copy version of a movie or not. Um, you can. Why not? Yeah, <laughs> but it's a, exactly the same story and the same sense. Yeah. So it can be, of course, predictable. Or uh, the movie her. Uh, one of my friends uh, always says that her, the movie Her, is an original movie, you know, introducing some new notions to the cinema. Uh -huh. And uh, so that can be another example. But I don't, I don't think so. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, why? Hi, Brown. We don't have to give examples for all of the words, you know? Just whatever you want. Okay. Hi, Brown. Hi, Brown means intended uh, for educated, uh, intelligent people. Um, often disapproving. The opposite is labra. Mm -hmm. Lobro. Lobro, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, so the, the in the definition itself, the connotation is provided as well. So 
highbrow and lowbrow uh, have negative connotations. There is also the word middlebrow. Oh, really? Let me write. Yeah. Middlebrow. <sighs> Middle brown. Interesting. Middle brown. Okay. Uh, impenetrable. 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 Uh, uh -huh. Extremely difficult to understand. The opposite is uh, transparent. Uh huh. So impenetrable, negative or positive connotation. Mm -hmm. um, I think. Um, maybe uh, both. both impenetrable. impenetrable. But I think it's more of a negative connotation. But transparent can be both negative and uh, positive. Mm -hmm. It comes from the word uh, penetrate, impenetrable. Oh, penetrate means um, not the sky. Exactly. For example, um for example what penetrate um, the light of the sun this is a this is an example from uh, vocabulary prayers i learned this word penetrate uh, in that book uh, the light of the sun penetrates through the moon to reach earth okay penetrates Okay, of course, it doesn't penetrate through, you know, um, inside the moon, but, you know, from the, uh, around the moon, okay? Yeah, penetrate. So if something penetrates, if a notion, if an idea, if uh, a text, whatever, penetrates to your mind, you understand it. If it doesn't penetrate, it's impenetrable and difficult to understand. Okay, got it. Okay. Uh, sophisticated uh, means showing advanced uh, skills and understanding. Um, uh, and the opposite is uh, primitive. Mm. Primitive, yeah. Sophisticated and... Uh, uh -huh. Mr. Qahiri has uh, dropped a very good example for the word impenetrable. They found the jungle virtually impenetrable. It means the trees, the trees were so dense and thick that it was difficult to go through them, impenetrable. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, interesting example. Uh, so sophisticated, positive or negative? Positive. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be negative too, I think. Uh, if something is very complicated and with a lot of details, sometimes it can be negative, but generally it's positive, sophisticated. And primitive, again, can be both, both negative and positive. Mm -hmm. uh, Next one. Uh, challenging and uh, demanding uh, considerable effort uh, uh, to be understood. The opposite as uh, um, the opposite is uh, undemanding. Um, mm -hmm. I think challenging uh, can be both positive and uh, negative. Um, yeah. What about undemanding? Uh, I think undemanding. I'm not sure. I think it's negative. Exactly. Next one. Uh, dazzling. Uh, dazzling means uh, inspiring great admiration because uh, it is a uh, brilliant. What's it right? Inspiring great admiration because it's uh, brilliant in some way. Uh, and uh, the opposite is pedestrian. 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 Hmm. Uh, uh, see how interesting these English words can be pedestrian. As a noun means someone who is traveling, you know, uh, walking uh, uh, on their foot, mm -hmm. uh, right? Not traveling by a vehicle. But as an adjective, as an adjective, it means something unimaginative, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Pedestrian. Hey, masalan, khaki piyade. As in, jan mishe gofta, ye chizi ke masalan. Aha, fahmidam be un. 
رب داره گفتم چرا داره اینجا اینو میگه گفتم حتما اون کلمه نیست من رو اشتباه میکنم نه همون کلمه از فرم صفتش رو یه معنی تقریبا همون تو همون هیته داره سیگجست میکنه اوکی okay. that's what I mean is a positive adjective and uh, pedestrian هم همونطور positive no it's negative it's the opposite خاکی خوبه دیگه No, it's unimaginative. You know, if something is dazzling, inspiring, great admiration because it's brilliant in some way. But if something is uh, pedestrian, it's primitive. It's unimaginative, boring, huh? Ah, uh-huh. okay, 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 I got it. Okay, number uh, the next one. Uh, evocative means calling up. In- evocative. Evocative. evocative uh, calling up ima- uh, images and memories um, the opposite is uninspiring mm-hmm. uninspiring yeah evocative is positive and uh, mm-hmm. inspiring is um, negative exactly uh, okay uh, thought uh, provoking thought provoking 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 Making people think, and uh, the opposite is uh, unstimulating. Unstimulating. Uh, geez, no, thought, thought provoking is positive, and unstimulating is negative. Exactly. These words can be synonym like evocative, provoking, or the next word, um, exquisite. These words can be synonyms. Oh. Uh, exquisite means having rare beauty or a uh, delicacy. 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 Do you mean in synonym thought provoking? Um. Hala, if thoughtish or has gone, but provoking, Misha, provoking or evocative. Hala, bishter be ham nazdikan. Hop ta exquisite. Vali, ar 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 ar. حالا اکسکویزیت کمتر نزدیکه بهشون ولی ایواکیری با پروبوکینگ خیلی نزدیک هم به هم که معنی خود پروبوکینگ بکرم پروبوکینگ yes. okay. Ex- uh, crazy. اکسکویزیت means uh, having اوکی okay, گفتم Up- the opposite is uh, clumsy um... clumsy clumsy uh, yeah. uh, the um, exquisite is positive adjective and... it has mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. clumsy negative Yeah, and it has two pronunciations, um, exquisite and exquisite. Exquisite, exquisite. Exactly. Both are correct. Okay. Uh, intriguing. 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 Interesting because it is strange or uh, mysterious. The opposite, as, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the opposite is uh, dreary. Exactly, dreary. Um, Jury means dull, something which is boring, dull, uh-huh. D-U-L-L. Okay, okay, I, I know. Uh, uh, intriguing intriguing uh, is positive uh, and dreary negative. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, P- peerless. 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 Better than any other. The opposite, uh, run- You know where it comes from? Peerless. Are. No, 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 no. You know, you know. See, for example, in a school, we have uh, our peers, okay? People who are uh, the same age as us, we, ca- we can call them our peers, okay? Yeah. People or, for example, things that are in the same level. If something is peerless, it means that there is nothing... uh you know in its level at its level yeah peerless okay so um uh, uh peerless is positive and uh run of the mill is negative mm-hmm. i've uh i've written two words uh, as synonyms for the word peerless one is unsurpassed unsurpassed Unsurpassed. Uh, can you please? Um, U N S U R 
sir. P A S S E D. Answer past. Okay, answer past. It means that there is nothing better than it. Mm. Okay. And uh, the other one is unrivaled. Again, if um, two things are rivals, they compete with each other. So if something is unrivaled, it means there is nothing or no one that can compete with it. Unrivaled. U N R I um, V A L L E D. Unrivaled. Unrivaled. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Unsurpassed. Unrivaled. Okay. Unsurpassed. Unsurpassed. Unrivaled. Peerless. Mm -hmm. Peerless. And the opposite, uh, you said run of the mill. We had this word earlier run of the mill. Something ordinary. Mm -hmm. You remember, Malia, run of the mill, a run of the mill job, an ordinary job. No, I don't remember. Thank you. Test one, Roshan. Bad to rope again, one name, and shall I name it? No, uh, I, I don't, I, of course, I don't want you to lie. If you don't remember, it's, it's fine. Run up the mill. We had it in, in the units related to the job. Okay. Uh, now, next one. Uh, tongue in cheek. Not intended to be taken seriously, uh, despite appearing serious. Um, and the opposite is earnest. Um, tongue in cheek is negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tongue in cheek. Yeah, uh, and the opposite earnest uh, should be positive. Mm -hmm. It can be positive depending on the context or sometimes negative, especially for things that are too much serious. Mm -hmm. Too much serious, it could be negative, yeah. Uh, the next one, priceless, extremely valuable. Um, the opposite is worthless. Uh, mm -hmm. Sure, priceless is positive and worthless is negative. Or mm -hmm. We had... A synonym, yeah. We had a synonym for the word priceless, invaluable. Invaluable. In for worthless. No, no, for for priceless. If something is invaluable, it's so much valuable that it's uh, you know difficult to measure its value. I think uh, we have to say valuable because I'm invaluable, valuable. Yes, for priceless. Okay. And uh, skillful, clever, masterly, done well. And the opposite is poor, poorly, done, poorly done. Poorly uh, done. Poorly done. Skillful uh, is positive and poorly done is negative. Of course. Um, so that is with part B. And at the same time, we kind of did exercise three and Four and um, I just um, recalled that for the word impenetrable, if I want to um, name a movie which was impenetrable for me at first, I would say uh, the Shutter Island. The first time that I watched it, it was impenetrable for me. Yeah, it was very complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And speaking of movies, speaking of movies, let me find a word, then um, uh, talk about it. It was the other day. After like two months of not watching anything, I was so busy in the last two months that I didn't watch even a single episode of uh, the current series that I follow. Uh, but the other day, I managed to watch one. Uh, the English noun is um, another round, but it's made in Denmark. It's a Danish. What? Uh, it's for uh, 2020. It's very new, yeah? Exactly. So you've watched it, huh? No, 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 not yet. 
haven't you? Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a Danish one. And oh my God, I enjoyed every single uh, second of it. Uh, it was thought provoking. I want to use the adjectives to use uh, to describe the movie. It was thought provoking. It was, um, it was, um, it was dazzling and um, intriguing. Oh. Yeah. These words, I think, best describe uh, the movie Another Round. The Danish title is um, Drunk. Oh my God. You should watch it as soon as possible. Okay, okay, for sure. Don't say anything. <laughs> you want? Okay, I'm beginning to spoil the movie. No, no. <laughs> okay. So, part C. Part C, art and uh, metaphor. Metaphor. Um, metaphor. Okay. Uh, notice how words uh, how words connected with art can be used when talking about literature. 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 The writer uh -huh. his hero in a fascinating light. Minor characters are more shadowy. Minor. Minor. Minor characters are more shadowy or sketchy. But they are also depict, depicted, depicted uh, quite powerfully. Even in, quite. Quite. Are a quiet names. Quite powerfully. And uh, even though uh, the focus is uh, inevitably um, on the two central characters, these are port, uh, port, portrait, portrait. Portrait. Portray uh, with great uh, sensitivity. Uh, the heroine uh, is particularly heroine. Hero two. Heroine. 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 Yeah. Heroine. Okay. Heroine. Yeah. Heroine. The female hero. Ah. Uh, okay. Heroine. Okay. Check out. Check out. Is a particularly cover, a colorful, and we see how her character is shaped and uh, molded uh, by events. Uh, some say the, uh, the author uh, illustrates this uh, his motif in a black and white, uh, white uh, fashion. But the image uh, he creates uh, to illuminate illuminate uh, the evils of uh, slavery slavery will remain with me forever okay that, let's uh quick it uh, there was a, a lot of adjective and uh, the reading i think it uh, was a little uh, difficult okay so, um, thank you anyway and um, despite of being difficult you managed it thank you now let's just uh, quickly go through some um words and their meanings the writer paints uh, his hero in a fascinating light so paints here of course means um writes describes okay the the first sentence above the box is really important notice how words connected with art can be used when talking about literature so this is the written form of art Okay, we use uh, words related to um, art in literature. So the writer paints means the writer writes or describes his hero in a fascinating light. Light here kind of again means atmosphere. Uh, means mean? Atmosphere. 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 The, you know, um, the... The total um, idea that you get from the book. Jav dige jav. Aha, aha, atmo, ah, okay, okay, we mean in atmosphere. <laughs> atmosphere, 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 shit. How atmosphere? Okay, back up. Yeah. Um, so, minor characters are more shadowy or sketchy. If something is shadowy or sketchy, it means they are uh, kind of unclear 
uh, unknown. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they are also depicted quite uh, powerfully. Depicted, depict means to show something, uh, to illustrate. So depicted again here means are written, are described. Because this is the metaphorical meaning of depict. Even though the focus is inevitably on the two central characters. Um, inevitably means unavoidably. Yeah. These are portrayed with great sensitivity. Again, portrait, we use portrait for, you know, some paintings. Uh, but here it refers to the uh, writing style of the writing. The um, heroine... I said the meaning, the female hero is particularly colorful. Uh, colorful, uh, how can I uh, associate it with written uh, form? Full, I, I, I said full of color or multicolor. Yeah, but in writing, but you get the meaning, right? Colorful means um, she is so uh, different parts of her character. Um, has been written very, you know, vividly and very colorfully. Yeah, not shabby. Uh, not shabby. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, and we see how her character is shaped and molded by events. Molded. Do you know the meaning of mold? Uh, no. You know, you you're not you're just not sure. See, um, when you want to bake a cake, after um, after doing the initial things, you finally pour it to the mold, a mold, okay, like a heart shaped mold, olive. Olive, yeah. Okay. Now we can use mold as a verb, meaning shape something to shape something. Okay. Uh, her character is shaped and molded by events. Some say the author illustrates his motives in a black and white fashion. Illustrate means um, to show something, but here it refers to the writing. Motives means ideas uh, in a black and white fashion, but the image he creates to illuminate the Evils of slavery will remain with me forever. So illuminate means to clarify something, to make something clear. And uh, evil here me evil. Evil here means uh, the negative uh, effect of something, okay, the bad uh, effects of something. Slavery is a slavery. The action, the act of keeping, you know, uh, practicing slavery. How do I put it in the words? It was very common in the past, you know, uh, treating people as slaves. Using people as a uh, utils. Mm -hmm. uh, will remain, will remain me, with me forever. Okay, um, so that is with the first page. Now, Part C was kind of. Uh, we have to complete uh, exercise two, five. Yeah, exercise two and uh, five and six will be done very quickly. So we have already uh, done one, two, three, and four. Now moving to exercise two. Read the sentences and answer the questions. Uh, Finn enjoys painting, but he's a Dober, not an artist. Does the speaker have a high or low opinion of Ben's work? For sure, low, because of using the word dober. Thank you. And uh, number two, curious as it now seems, uh, uh, the artist's work was deemed morally dangerous. Uh, is this dangerous? Dangerous. Uh, okay. Just then. Uh, is this sentence more likely to come from a formal or informal source? Uh, formal, because using uh, the word deemed, yeah? Mm -hmm. Or uh, even the next phrase, morally dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's a formal one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
number three. The uh, sculptor, the sculptor is now uh, inured to criticism. Um, criticism. Criticism. How uh, is this uh, sculptor affected by criticism? Uh, not affected. Uh, he is not affected uh, because of using the word uh, inured. Um, exactly. As we He's not affected at all. Yeah, as we discussed. Uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, number four, while at, while at art school, uh, Matilda was uh, particularly interested in the Cubist School of Art. Uh, what is the difference between art school and school? <coughs> it was very interesting for me uh, because I didn't know at all the difference between an art school and school of art. Again, uh, if I saw these two words, uh, I think uh, in different uh, passage, uh, I um, will think... You wouldn't differentiate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will think it, uh, they have the same meaning. Uh, but... Yeah. Uh, art school is a place where students study art, while a school of art is an artistic movement. Uh -huh. In Persian, we say maktab. Maktab, for example, honari. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. School of art, yeah, maktab honari. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or, for maktab of adabi, school of literature. <clears throat> exactly. Uh, uh, exercise five. Uh, yeah. Choose the correct word to complete these sentences. Um, number one, I think that the artist's uh, cartoons are usually rather um, hypro, dreary, labro, uh, as they are. Lowbrow. Lowbrow. Lowbrow, uh, as they are intended to appeal to a uh, mass audience. Um, lowbrow is a correct word. Low. Lowbrow. Lowbrow, sorry. Low brow uh, is a correct. It comes from the word low. See, if something is high brow, it belongs to uh, some people who seriously follow uh, art, huh? Mm -hmm. If it's low brow, it's for um, the public in general, those who don't take art maybe seriously. And there is this middle brow that not professional, not amateur, something between. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Now. Lowbrow. Lowbrow. Number two. When an artist sent it an ordinary red brick to an uh, exhibition, no one was sure whether it was uh, impenetrable, uh, run of the mill, tongue in cheek, or intended as a serious statement. Um, tongue in cheek. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, number three, although the artist's early work is very sophisticated, uh, some of his later pieces uh, are surprisingly primitive, uh, thought-provoking, original in style. The correct word is primitive. Primitive. Mm, let me see. Although the artist's early work is very sophisticated, some of his later pieces are surprisingly primitive in style. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Primitive. Mm -hmm. I, I find uh, pictures of dark gray street stands uh, rather dreary, uh, prayerless, and uh, dazzling. Dreary. Exactly. Uh, number five, the design on this china plate is earnest. Exquisite. 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 Transparent. However, did they manage to paint such fine detail? Uh, exquisite. Mm -hmm. uh, number six. Uh, although his photographs uh, are quiet, uh, are quite. 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 Challenging, evocative, uh, and tricky. Evocative. Evocative, intriguing. Uh, it is worth making the effort uh, to understand them. Uh, challenging. Mm -hmm. Although his photographs are quite challenging, it is worth making the effort to understand them. 
Okay, thank you so much. Now, number six. Make a verb, noun, adjective, a word formation, a ta formation table with these words from C opposite. Okay. So, mm. paint. What is the verb form, noun form, and the adjective form? Okay, uh, it is verb. Paint is a verb. Paint. Is a verb, and the noun form is um, painting. Painting, I like you. Mm -hmm. Painting, paint, uh, or painter. And uh, mm -hmm. adjective is painted. Exactly. I, of course, you can use paint as a verb, but you can also use as a noun, you know, paint referring to the substance that you paint with. Mm -hmm. Right? So you can use paint as a noun too. Okay. Uh, painter, noun, referring to the person, painting, um, a painting, a picture uh, painted by a painter, and painted is the adjective. Next one. Okay. Uh, next one, sketch. Uh, sketch mm -hmm. could be verb or noun. Mm -hmm. The noun form of sketch is sketch, and the adjective form of sketch is sketchy. Yeah, we had it in the text. So sketch, yeah. sketch, sketchy. Thank you. Uh, depict um, is a verb. Depict. Depict is a verb. And uh, the noun is depiction. And mm -hmm. the adjective form, its objective form is depicted. Mm -hmm. uh, the people, let me, let me give you an extra explanation. This word is used a lot in IELTS writing task one, uh, academic uh, module, um, because you have to deal with some graphs and they are illustrated, they are depicted. So uh, usually the question is the charts below show, and if you want to paraphrase the word show, you use, for example, the word depicted. The depicted charts provide information about blah, blah, blah. Okay, for the next one, portray. Uh, the uh, portray is a verb, and uh, mm -hmm. its noun uh, could be port portrait. Portrait, portrait, or portrayal. Portrayal, yeah. And the adjective is uh, portrayed. Mm -hmm. Portrayed at the end. Uh, okay, color uh, is a verb or it could be a noun. Mm -hmm. And uh, for adjective, we can say colorful or uh, colorless. Even the word colored. Colored, yeah. Colored. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, next one, shape. Shape is a noun and verb, both of them. And um, the adjective is shapely. Shapeful, You're cheating, I think. Uh, um, <laughs> because there is this word shaped, very easier than shapely that you can think of, but you go to the answer uh, she, answer check, answer he, mm -hmm. and uh, say the word shapely. Of course, shapely is an adjective. But we have uh, formed. Yeah, yeah, Up, okay. And shaped can be an adjective to shaped, with an ed. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, but uh, in terms of shapeful, you said shapeful. I'm not sure about it. Shapeful. Mm, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm sure I'm not. Okay. I'm not sure either. You're going to either write in German go I'm not sure either. Yeah. Instead of two, we can use either. Yeah. If, he, if the verb in your sentence is negative, yes. Oh. Uh, you say, yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. And I say, I'm not sure either. But if I want to say, I sure neither. I am sure. I am sure neither. Um, that is, um, that is, 
Uh, we use neither in this way most of the time. Uh, neither am I. You say I'm not sure. I say neither am I. Neither am I. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we use either at the end of sentence, but a very um, kind of informal, not informal, very what? Yeah, in, in, in the spoken English, instead of saying, for example, I'm not sure either, they say me neither. Me, neither. But uh, they also use this form, neither am I. Neither am I. Let me give you and guys uh, an explanation of this. So um, there are four words. To, T-O-O. -O, yeah. So, either and neither. Okay, four words. To and either. They mean the same thing, okay? But you use to... When, you're, when the verb in your sentence is uh, actually not in, in your sentence, in, you know, the person that is talking to you because you kind of want to agree or disagree with them. Yeah. This using these words is a kind of agreeing or disagreeing with the people that you're talking to, okay? Um, so if the verb in his or her sentence is mm, positive, you say to, we, we, we had the example, I am sure, I am sure to, or me too, okay? I am sure to, me too. Mm -hmm. Now moving to the word either, I am not sure, I am not sure. So, uh, I'm not either or me neither, uh -huh. okay? Uh, okay? Now, now, um, now. Now, uh, now, 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 <laughs> so and, so and either. So we use them this way. So am I, so is she, so are they, and uh, neither in the same way. Neither am I, neither uh, do I, neither will I, okay? So if the a verb in your sentence, again, is uh, positive, I would use so e to, you know, agree with you, okay? Uh, you say, I'm sure. I say, so am I. I so am I. And then you say, I'm not sure. I say, um, neither am I. Mm -hmm. neither. Yeah. Okay. Thank this you. is how these words are used. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the word illustrate uh, is... Illustrate. 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 Uh, is a verb. And the noun form is uh, illustration. Illustration. Or illustrator. Mm -hmm. The person who does the illustration. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And the adjective is illustrative. Illustrative. The pronunciation Illustr a little bit changes. Or Illustrative. Maybe, or maybe illustrated. Exactly. Illustrated. And illustrative, exactly. Mm -hmm. The last one, uh, illum illuminate, illuminate. Yeah, illuminate. Illuminate, uh, illumination, the noun form of illuminate. Uh, the illuminate is a um, uh, verb. And uh, the adjective it could be illuminated or illuminating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or illuminating, illuminated, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thank you so much. Um, Ooh, dear see, um, to, in order to, you know, uh, master your skills in using these kind of words uh, in order to master your vocabulary but knowing only the words will not help enough okay maybe if you want to know how the word for example illustrative is used the best way is just to go to the dictionary a standard one like cambridge or oxford and to see and to read some standard examples to see that the, how the word is used so that later on you can use it in your speech or in, or in your writing too but knowing the words only you know will be just merely knowing them but not to know how actively use them mm -hmm. 
So, um, thank you so much. Um, again, I think this unit was a bit of heavy one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah? Not because of the words, the adjectives are very useful, especially the adjectives in part B, but because it was not kind of my cup of tea, yeah. and apparently uh, yours neither. Um, so, but... Yeah, but still, you know, we learned something and we reviewed something. Uh, over to you is, you know, uh, over to you again, you know, it's, it, it asks us, visit the websites of well-known museums and art galleries. Oh, my God. I don't remember when was the last time I went to. to uh, I think in during my whole life, I haven't been to an art gallery, let alone to, you know, going to the website and uh, some looking at some works of art and trying to, uh, what trying to uh, describe them okay <laughs> some uh, I mean no offense some people may be really into art yeah uh, uh, I mean no offense this is just something personal uh, of course it's invaluable and uh, and and I don't know what to say. I don't know how to talk about art <laughs> either. Okay, I'd better uh, finish. Any final comments, Melihem? No, thank you very much, dear Sima. You're so welcome. Next uh, week, Unit 22, talking about books. Huh, more Sima Yi units. Yes. <laughs> Is it Malihei as well? Yeah, exactly. Okay, then we will be introducing some good books to each other next week. Okay, bye. -bye. Take care. Next week. Take care.